Hello and welcome to the LARP Book Podcast. This is a four-part series in which we talk to Tintin about how she went about creating a LARP and how you can do exactly the same thing. So sit back and enjoy. And all of the details can be found over at LARPbook.com. Okay, then we are now back with Tintin and talking about sort of um, how to actually practically go about things now. Okay, right. You've you've done all your story. You've you've written up things. You've got your end game and and all the rest of that. You've uh, you know kind of how you want the game to go. But now we've got to come back into the real world, as they say. Uh, and you've obviously got to find somewhere first of all where where you're going to actually host this. Is it going to be in some somebody's house is it going to be in at an actual venue is it going to be you know in a field you know depending on on the type of LARP (laughs) you're going to do so how do you go about then setting out the the budget then uh so you know how much it's going to cost and how much you're you're going to to charge people um if you are going to charge people uh to come along to this LARP you know even if just just chipping in for the food uh, or transport or what have you so how do you go about actually doing that well let's see here first of all decide where you're gonna have it and for how long and for how much yes basically the first thing you need to do is just find a venue that will suit your um uh, that will suit your needs so if you're going to have a small romanesque larp set in a cafe i'm guessing you're not going to want to use your grandma's backyard no matter how large it is (laughs) exactly and second of all, you have to take the fees into consideration when you're planning your budget. So for a small arc like this, which wasn't more than about two and a half hours, the budget cons- the budget would probably consist mostly of food and staging. Maybe props, but really take a look at your budget before you decide to use props, because props are they're very useful if you're going for theatrical fantasy large scale scale LARPs. But if you're just going for a small chamber LARP with a couple of friends like this one was, it may be more effective to just describe the action rather than getting like 20 rockets and setting them off just because it looks cool. (laughs) Well, if you have it in the budget or if you can uh, get money for it, I'm not saying you shouldn't. Uh, I'm just saying that it might be a bit over the top when all you've been doing is drinking beer and eating bully beef and uh, living in constant fear of the Germans or French. So basically, for this LARP, for example, we, because we're in Sweden, we had managed to have access to a youth organization, which um, managed where we could borrow a, um, so uh, we were able to borrow borrow a part of a youth center that was actually, and that had the interior design of an old style cafe. So checking with youth and community centers if that fits your LARP, it's a good idea. Yeah. Like I had some fr- I was at a friend's LARP down in uh, the southern Sweden, and they had a bureaucracy-based LARP, and they managed to borrow a com- parts of a community center for it, and it fit perfectly. Yeah. Okay. Uh, that's super. So for this LARP, um, we did because we managed to get the staging on the cheap side. We also, we were able to plan better for the food, uh, which in this case consisted of tea, high tea, so British like afternoon tea with sandwiches and buns and stuff. And then at the very end, pizza for the after party. (laughs) Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because pizza goes well everywhere. (laughs) Of course. And we also had the question of props. Because this was a mainly paper-based LARP, and like I said, a chamber LARP with no large special effects, even large LARPs sometimes don't have big special effects, Uh, they they were cranked out by hand on a computer using magazines, uh, actually archived newspapers that had been scaled to fit on a uh, regular sheet of printer paper. Okay, yeah. uh, Alongside a telegraph. As alongside copies of old telegrams, yeah. which are very easy to find online. And that's one thing. If you're using documents, trying to go the historically authentic, old-fashioned way is often surprisingly simple and effective. Like, say you're doing a, hist- a, a medieval LARP. If you, finding, finding parchment is hard, but you could find artist-grade paper for cheap and yeah. just print calligraphy onto that using a printer. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. 
no worries. So when you're looking at, at this then, so take everything in, in, into consideration is, is, is what you're saying uh, to begin Sheet. with. Uh, actually, cost it out onto a sheet, see how much it would cost, uh, see how much, and I, I would probably guess as well, depending on the type of LARP you're going to do, see how much the players want to con- contribute. Do they have any props uh, or do oh, they yes. have any things as well that they can help out with? It's- It's very interesting that you say that because we managed to actually, one of our uh, players was kind enough to take it on herself to actually do the baking. Uh, So those that, and that saved us a lot of money as well. And we also had the fact that this, and I also did write, and this is very important if, unless you want to uh, shell out money for someone's costume, uh, is to just write it in the LARP document, the rules for clothing. And we had this rule that it was basically, it's preferable if you come dressed in the general scheme of the time period 1910 to 1930, than if you come dressed as an elf. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, that's right. Yeah, and and to be honest with you, you know, when when you're looking at that that style uh, period of LARP as well, going going around to secondhand clothes stores or what have you is is a massive uh, massive boon because you can really find some some old style looking clothing in in those places. Exactly. And to get back on the idea of a budget, you also have to figure out basically if you can get it done for free, that's probably the best option. Oh yeah, definitely. Every every time, if you can, if you can get it done for free, get it done for free, because that that will drive down yes. the cost to, to you and your players. Exactly, and uh, the thing is also that it'll also drive home the idea that this isn't that this is a non-profit thing. And where I live in Sweden, youth organisations tend uh, uh, can be asked to fund non-profit cultural endeavours, and basically, the less money you're actually making off of it, the more of a cultural event it, it, and it counts as. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I suppose that's that, that's quite lucky in the country where you are. Over here, I don't think we've got anything like that in the UK. It's uh, you're, you're you're all on your own. Crack on. There Aww. we go. <laughs> so there we go. Excellent. Um, anything else you'd like to talk about? Authenticity. Okay. There are several. Oh, we did uh, try for authenticity food-wise. Yeah. However. I'd say it's probably one of those things where you're better off just doing an approximation. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Food is one of those few things where you can actually go more or less historically authentic if you like, but that's not always viable. Yeah. So keep that in mind. Yeah, no, exactly. I I do have a friend uh, that goes along or he is invited along to to certain laps uh, usually of the medieval period now he actually cooks authentic food from the medieval period so things things like currants and what have you aren't around uh, and and he has to use certain berries and things that were only available at that period in time within the country uh, so so yeah he, he goes full on for the uh, the authentic me, I'm okay. I'm okay having pizza uh, at a medieval LARP. Not a problem with me, but there we go. <laughs> I can pretend that it's just unleavened bread. That's not an issue. <laughs> Well, thank you very much for uh, actually doing this, Tintin. It's been an absolute delight in talking to you. Um, now then, if people want to follow you uh, and what have you, how do they actually get hold of you? How do they find you on the Tinter web? Uh, let's see here. Well, uh, you can follow me on my blog, hmshangman.tumblr.com where I occasionally post photos of LARPs I attend, observations about LARPs, and articles on the subject of LARPing. That is fantastic. Again, thank you very much for doing this. It's been an absolute delight. Well, thank you for having me. <laughs> it's not a problem at all. Um, and if, let's say, if you want to catch up with this entire series, uh, then what I'm going to do, I'm going to, uh, first of all, put them up in, in separate blocks anyway. So uh, again, Tintin, thank you very much. It's been an absolute delight. Thank you. No worries. Right. Uh, it's goodbye from me and goodbye from Tintin. Bye. Bye.